The Blood of Olympus is the fifth and final book in the Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan, an action-packed fantasy adventure that follows two camps of demigods, Greek and Roman, as they work together to prevent the awakening of the primordial earth goddess, Gaia, and her giants. The novel continues the journey of the seven demigods aboard the Argo II, Percy Jackson, son of Poseidon, Annabeth Chase, daughter of Athena, Jason Grace, son of Jupiter, Piper McLean, daughter of Aphrodite, Leo Valdez, son of Hephaestus, Frank Zhang, son of Mars, and Hazel Levesque, daughter of Pluto. They are tasked with delivering the Athena Parthenos, a powerful ancient statue, to Camp Half-Blood to heal the rift between the Greek and Roman demigod camps and stop the war between them. As the story begins, the heroes are dealing with the aftermath of their previous battles and the knowledge that their time is running out to prevent Gaia from awakening and wreaking havoc on the world. They must reach the ancient lands, Greece, where the final confrontation is prophesied to occur. Simultaneously, Gaia's forces are amassing, including her army of giants, each of whom can only be killed by the combined efforts of a god and demigod fighting together. The demigods face various obstacles as they make their way through the Mediterranean. Each character undergoes personal challenges and development. Hazel learns to control the mist, an ability that allows her to manipulate reality, while Leo continues to work on a plan to rescue his friends and defeat Gaia with the help of the bronze dragon, Festus. Frank is promoted to the rank of Praetor, and with this newfound authority, he commands his fellow Roman demigods to work with the Greeks rather than against them. Piper becomes instrumental in using her charm-speak abilities to deceive and manipulate their enemies, and she also cultivates her relationship with Jason. Their love grows stronger, and they support one another as they fulfill dangerous roles in their quest. Annabeth and Percy, veterans of many battles and quests together, must grapple with the possibility of a future that might not include each other, should they fail or fall in the battle against Gaia. Jason, struggling with his leadership role and identity due to his Roman heritage and Greek training, is crucial in unifying the two demigod groups. He suffers serious injuries during their quests but remains dedicated to their mission. The demigods eventually reach Greece and split up to tackle different missions. Reyna, Nico D'Angelo, and Coach Hedge, another set of key characters, are tasked with transporting the Athena Parthenos back to Camp Half-Blood. Their journey involves numerous perilous encounters, including battles with various monsters and overcoming the manipulations of the goddess Orion. Nico reveals his ability to transport himself and others through shadows, a taxing and dangerous power. Throughout their trip, Nico also confronts personal demons, including his complicated feelings about Percy and coming to terms with his own identity. Reyna demonstrates her strength and resolve, as well as her ability to lead and make sacrifices for the greater good. The demigods at Camp Half-Blood fortify their defenses, and despite the tense atmosphere and the impending Roman attack, they work to prepare the camp for the final stand against Gaia's forces. Old rivalries and grudges resurface, but are eventually set aside in the face of the greater threat. As the narrative shifts between the protagonists on the Argo II and those delivering the Athena Parthenos, both groups face continuous trials, and strategies must evolve to outwit and outmatch their numerous foes. Critical to their plan is a prophesied physician's cure, a legendary mixture that has the potential to bring someone back from the brink of death. The ingredients for the cure are rare and guarded by formidable enemies, but the heroes manage to obtain them thanks to Leo's ingenuity, Hazel's control of the mist, and the bravery of their friends. As the climax approaches, the demigods reunite at Camp Half-Blood. The giants rise, leading to a harrowing battle involving both the demigods and the gods themselves, who finally decide to aid their children. The demigods and Romans' cooperation, along with the godly reinforcements, proves vital in defeating the giants in a climactic showdown. In the midst of the battle, Gaia awakens and ascends into the sky as a seemingly unstoppable force. Leo, who has long been haunted by a prophecy foretelling his sacrifice, puts his endgame into motion. He entrusts his friends with the physician's cure, and riding on Festus, confronts Gaia alone. Utilizing his mechanical abilities, fire powers, and a clever ploy involving an explosion of Greek fire, 
Leo sacrifices himself to obliterate Gaia, fulfilling the prophecy that a hero must die to defeat her. However, through the use of the physician's cure and with help from his friends, Leo is resurrected. The novel ends with Leo reuniting with his love interest, the immortal Calypso, whisking her away on Festus to start a new life together. With Gaia defeated and the giants destroyed, the Roman and Greek demigods celebrate their victory and the newfound peace between their camps. After so many trials, hardships, and losses, the heroes of Olympus can finally look forward to a time of reconstruction and harmony, with the hope of a brighter future for both camps of demigods. As the series concludes, each character reflects on their experiences, relationships are solidified, and growth is acknowledged. The demigods have developed new strengths and understandings, not only about themselves and their abilities, but also about friendship, cooperation, and the importance of unity in the face of division. The victory is bittersweet, as it is tempered by the sacrifices made, but it is a triumph nonetheless, a triumph of the human spirit as much as of demigod heroism. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.